Hi everyone and welcome to another one of my videos. It's honestly been a while and right now I'm back in Ratchet and Clank 2 on one of the first planets. It's raining, it's very atmospheric, but I'm gonna pause for a minute so you don't have to hear the constant rain sound because I need to explain something. So, you've probably wondering, been wondering where I've been. It's, about, it's been about three months since I last uploaded my last video, according to YouTube anyway, like when I go and check my own channel. There's a reason for this. Okay, so I'm not going to go too long with this explanation since I need to tell you what this video is about. So, the quick version of it is that my motherboard died, so I had to get my entire system replaced and the inside parts of my computer replaced as well. I don't know how to fix computer parts myself, so I had to ask, to ask a friend to do it, and I just kind of sat, ba sat back and let them do it and didn't bother them because they also had like school and uni work and that kind of stuff. Uh, so, unfortunately, I didn't really learn what to do with the inside computer parts. I just know that now it's working, it's fixed, and they added a few fans. But, uh, yeah, I just went and, like, got them pliers and stuff when they needed it. And they were kind of grumpy at that point. So I, I didn't go and, like, ask them how anything works because that would just probably annoyed them. Then, after all that happened... Uh, uh, oh, yeah, by the way, instead of uh, Windows 7, I now have a Windows 10 system. Like my system is now Windows 10, so that means that in the, somewhere in the future, I'll be able to buy a few of the uh, upgraded Asia Empires games, so whoopee for me. And I'm also going to try this in to install this Forza game, because I got that with my um, Xbox One, and that only worked on Windows 10, so I was like, oh, can't install it, I have Windows 7, but now that I have Windows 10, I can install it. And then another reason why the videos took so long is because I tried to record in multiple audio tracks. So if you don't know what that is, um, imagine like separate audio streams. So one audio like a stream was going to be my voice and another one was going to be potentially like uh, people on Skype or Discord calls. And the last one was going to be the desktop audio, which is like the audio of game sounds that you hear. And... That seemed like a great idea for me to do because that means I can individually alter the audio levels of different stuff. Like right now I'm recording on one audio track. So my voice you can hear is is like linked up with the sounds in the game. So if I set the game sounds too loud, I can't alter the game sounds without altering my voice. I actually talked about that in the last video on my channel when I cranked up the volume way too high. And then it turned out like shit. And I'm hoping that I've actually put the audio at good levels this time because I couldn't get the multiple audio tracks to work. I'm using OBS, by the way. So if you know how multiple audio tracks work and you could explain it to me, that'd be great. Yep, yeah, you're the person watching the video. Anyway, on to the actual video. What is it about? Well, it's a video on how to... This is going to be a video about how to get skill points in Ratchet & Clank 2. So, what do skill points get you? Well, if you go down here into the special menu, they get you cheats. So, as you can see here, the first cheat would, uh, you'd need to get five skill points to get it. Then the next one would need seven, then ten, and so on. And then the last one here says that this is, um, that's impossible. Technically, this video could be counted as spoilers for the game, or cheating. But frankly, in my opinion, don't be too hard on yourself if you, um, end up, well... Yeah, using this video to look up how to get the skill points because some of them are quite hard to get. They give you no indication of what you should do. And this is the list of the skill points. So, as you can see, I've already gotten 2 out of 30. I was meant to get none, but I got 2 of them already because this one, you all you have to do is win 300 bolts from a slot machine in the Marktar Nebula, and I was gambling in the game just to get money. And it just, I just got that. And the other one I got here, to be or not to be hit, you have to kill this enemy here, it shows. The B2 brawler without getting a scratch. I just fought well. I wasn't trying to get no hits, but apparently I got no hits in a fight, so I got that. I couldn't help it. Anyway, uh, the reason why I'm here... Oh, wait. I should actually get back to my ship. Yep, so I'm going to show you what planet I'm on right now. It's actually the very first planet you can go back to on the game. Megacorp Outlet, Uzla. So, yeah, you come here right after you do the first mission, and you can actually go back to the same planet. The first mission was on Uranus, but the planet's different later on. In fact, it's different. If you watched my last video, The uh, Sucks for Less Prison, that was actually, like, that, that planet is the very first planet you go to. Anyway, moving on. So, the way you get the very first skill point is getting to the Megacorp store. And I might as well just show you how to get there because, well, 
it's honestly quite easy. As you can see, I'm, in fact, I'm, yeah, why not? I'll do something different. I'm just gonna avoid all the enemies. In fact, what I'm doing here, I'm pretty much not even using the thruster pack to my back, so you could pretty much do this when you first, like, get on this level. <laughs> this is amazing! This is, this is so slow! They can't catch me! I'm a speedy little Lombax. Yeah, by the way, that's the um, race you're playing as here, Ratchet. He's a Lombax, so that's, uh, that's what the cat people in this game are called. Well, he's kind of a cat person, kind of fox. It's weird. Yeah, I'm just smashing these things to get a bit of money. As you can tell there, I got 100,000 volts. You may think, oh, that's a lot. Oh, no, it's not. One of the guns in this game, there's like one gun that, that costs just that. Oh, okay, they got me once. But there's one gun that costs like over 100,000 volts. Yeah, this here is where you fight one of the bosses in the game. Unfortunately, I can't show you it because once you beat it once, it's dead forever. And here we are. This is the f this is the place where you get the first skill point, the Megacorp store or outlet. This is like a giant shopping center. Oh, and if you're wondering what I was doing there, I was equipping the Dynamo. It's a gadget in this game that lets you get machinery working. Thank you for choosing Megacorp, where our customers come first. Yeah, it sounded a little weird though there because um my system slowed down a tiny bit, so that's why the voice was slowing down. Unfortunately, I don't really know how to fix that. I mean, I tweak some settings in the, in, the, in the emulator I'm using, but yeah, I don't know how to tr tweak them all. Hopefully you don't mind that too much. Right, so now that we're finally here, uh, one thing I want to show you is that the music in this place is kind of uh, really cheesy and awesome, so I'm just going to turn it up for a moment. Oh, that sounds weird. Yeah, so yeah, so as you can say, see, the uh, music in this section of the game is just, well, yes, yeah, super cheesy, like, waiting music like you're in an elevator, and I frankly love it. It really gives the place a good atmosphere. On the outside, it was kind of like dark, kind of techno music that really fits in with, like, the hostile swamp, and in here it's just like, oh, so lovely, let's go shopping, let's, like, go and, like, browse throughout all this stuff. And speaking of shopping, yeah, I'm now going to get down to the uh, part of, well, I should should have done this already. So, how you get this skill point is honestly just, yeah, it's called smash and grab. You bust up the Megacorp store. So just start breaking everything in here, like I'm doing right now. So, this is obviously one of the ways you can go about it, where you just chuck your wrench at everything, like so. Only this method, as you can see, takes a little while. So, if you're late in the game like I am, and you don't mind wasting a bit of ammo, you can do it what I call the radical way. <laughs> yep, you just equip your most powerful weapon, and you go ballistic. Oh look, all the stuff isn't even blown up over there. Don't worry, I got a nuke for that. Still not. I'll snipe it with a sniper rifle. <laughs> yep, this is total overkill, and I'm wasting so much ammo, but I don't care since I have heaps of it. And, uh, also in my opinion, this is worth it for you, the viewer. Yeah, if you're wondering why the enemies there are getting zapped, it's because I've got a shock mod in my weapon. So, yeah, you've pretty much seen... That, that, those are like two of my strategies for basically busting up the Megacorp store, and that is... The nuclear option, where you just use all the weapons you have, and just, you wreck the place through absurd amounts of firepower, like I'm doing right now. Or, there's actually a third option. And, since you already see me breaking this stuff, you're pretty much going to have to, well... I was originally in this, uh, like, I, I had this planned out in my head, so even though I don't script my videos, I do have general video ideas. And one of my ideas is, oh, I know, I'll go and break every single little part of the Megacorp store up, and then you actually see me get the skill point, and then you know I'm not lying, but that might actually honestly take a little while. What am I talking about, actually? This is the last part of the Megacorp store. Yeah, so, as soon as I smash these, uh, these few things here, I should actually just get the skill point.
Yeah, there you go. I got the skill point. However, there is a third way that you can um that you can get the skill point. Or really, well, a third way that makes sense to me anyway. Yeah, get the skill point. I don't know why I said it like that. Okay, so I'm going to this vendor here. And there is a reason why I'm actually buying all this ammo, and in fact, mm, yes, I'm gonna buy this- No, wait, I, I wanted to buy the plasma coil later on. But I am going to- it's definitely a good idea to, uh, restock up and everything, because at this point, I'm gonna head down this pipe. This is actually a secret area, and if you're wondering how I'm getting up here and walking on this wall, uh, one of the planets, I think it's, um, I think it's called Jobba? It's where the Megacorp games are, so there's a battle arena there, and if you go there and win the first round, you, um, then, then once you win the first round, you get the gravity boots and they allow you to walk up magnetic surfaces. So down the pipe we go. And, uh, this place, I'm pretty sure it actually has its own boss music, so I'll just let you hear that. Oh. This is actually the same music that you are uh, for a different boss fight. I think it's like the Thugs for Less Theater. So, yeah. Down here, as it turns out, there is this ugly thing. Now, I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to uh, just turn off the music. If you wanted to listen to it, just uh, look up like uh, the boss, uh, just boss battle music for Ratchet and Clank 2. I'm pretty sure that's like for the Thugs for Less Leader, but I honestly, when I'm recording, I concentrate better when there's no music. Yeah, so these, um, that those blobs he shoots at you can actually destroy these lily pads. So you want to avoid them. Oh, and don't get stuck in the mud here too often, because Clank, well, the, the robot that's on your back that's right now activating my jetpack whenever I do a double jump, he can't actually help you get out of there. He'll just, like, if you go into the mud too many times, and you you won't be able to press X to get out of it like I did and do that small jump, you'll just sink in the mud. Yeah, so, this boss battle, I actually thought it was a lot difficult, more difficult, because um, I remember playing this in the past, and apparently I just sucked at playing this game, because I was like, oh man, I just can't beat this boss, he's so hard, and now I'm like even taking my time to set up turrets on his own lily pads to try and kill him with. Oh, yeah, and, and this is why I love the uh, chopper slash multi-star weapons. Mainly because you can just fire them off, and you don't even have to aim at the enemy, and they'll just be able to lock onto him. <laughs> yeah, and there he goes, there go my turrets. Shooting one of his own lily pads, and the best thing is, they're mobile turrets because I put them on the lily pads, and the lily pads can actually move. Uh, that was actually a great tactic. I'm gonna put a few more down. Oh! Oh, okay, I guess you've seen what happens now when you land a turret in the wrong place. Have fun! Also, I thought I wasn't prepared for this, but apparently, my weapons are actually quite good. I thought you needed a lot more firepower to kill this ugly thing. The reason why I'm calling it a thing is because, uh, I don't really know what to call it. What would you call it? A toad? A frog? <laughs> a jabberwock? Oh, uh, by the way... Oh. Oh, okay. I thought I was dead immediately, but apparently it can actually, uh, eat you. And it will just spit you out afterwards, and it does nearly no damage because I have the best armor in the game. So I imagine this was uh, a lot like uh, you trying to eat a walnut hole. You pretty much can't. You'd kind of break your teeth on it. So I got a feeling that's what happened with this big frog thing. It just it started like breaking its teeth on my armor. Oh dear. Oh good, there was another lily pad nearby. But yeah, as you can tell, just like a lot of enemies in this game, this boss here... It will start to do more and more deadly attacks as you, um... As you deal more of it the damage to its health. Oh, and, uh, the weapon here I'm using, it's called the, uh, the one I'm using right now. It's called the Mega Rocket Tube. It's an upgraded from the Mini Rocket Tube, and I could hold down the button to charge up, like, four rockets at once and fire them, but I'm not going to do that because, in my opinion, you get more value for your, well, bolts and money in this game. If you just use a, um, if you just fire the rockets individually. 
Yeah, so that there, now you know how to fight that boss, and now this place is closed off, you can't go here anymore. And now you have the box breaker. What does it do? Well, I'm going to go to another planet to show you, because I've already broke everything in this store. Oh yeah, right, right. I don't want to leave. I'm actually not going to leave this planet just yet, because there's actually a second skill point you can get here. That that one was just the first one. That was just like uh, that one first one I got for smashing up the store was called smash and grab. In fact, I'm just going to the skill point menu so I can show you. So like, I was gonna do. I plan to do this in the video, like basically show you I'm not lying. But I mean, I've been pretty honest so far in my videos, so I didn't think you were. And even shows little pictures after you got them. So yeah. That's what they assumed you'd do. Get your wrench out and smash everything, but I went ballistic with my weapons. And there's actually a reason why I'm going down this path again. Except this time, I just don't feel like dodging all the enemies, so I'm just getting out my guns and blasting them. Alright, so right here is, is good enough of a place as any. The skill point is called Prehistoric Rampage. Now, what were my first thoughts when you about this skill point? I was thinking, okay, I need to kill every single enemy in the level. I did that. No. Because, what, Prehistoric and Rampage. Okay, maybe I need to use really, really, like, old-style weapons. Maybe I need to use the weapons from Ratchet & Clank 1, because there is a weapon vendor in this game where you can buy those weapons. No, that didn't work. Um, and then I thought, what if I just use my wrench? No, that doesn't work. It's really, really, in my opinion, kind of a... Uh, Bad naming that for that skill point, Prehistoric Rampage. What you're meant to do is shoot these things. Yes, you can actually shoot the Pterodactyls. And... I mean, like, when I was younger, I had no idea this would even work, because they just seem like ba stuff in the background. They don't even seem like something you can kill. So yeah, you just shoot down four of them, and you get Prehistoric Rampage, which... I guess, yeah, it kind of makes sense, because they are dinosaurs, they are kind of prehistoric, but just... Eh, I wasn't too pleased about that. Oh yeah, by the way, um, I might as well go here. So after you've gotten past this place, Canal City, on Noctak, it's kind of an early point in the game, you then get access to a single asteroid called Slim Cognito Ship Shack. This is, um, uh, basically, he's an aftermarket black vent market, uh, he's a black market, uh, um, vendor who sells, I'm pretty sure, illegal ship uh, upgrades, because he definitely sells illegal weapon upgrades to you, but he also sells stuff for your ship. Now, some of the stuff he sells, I'm pretty sure it isn't illegal, because it's just, as you can see here, a paint job, but some of the other stuff he sells you is actually, like, as I said before, pretty illegal, because it's weapon upgrades. So these paint jobs here, you can only get them if you've actually gotten skill points. So if you rewind the video previously, there was actually, like when I was talking at one point, there's actually a little pop-up that says, new items are available for purchase at Slim Cognito Ship Shack. This is what it's talking about. So if you don't actually have any skill points in this game, you can't actually unlock any paint jobs and customize your ship. I can't customize my ship anyway, because I don't have enough, um, I don't have enough retainium. A rare titanium, the uh, uh, currency you use to purchase your ship. Anyway, moving on to the next planet, the Marktar Nebula, and the next set of skill points. So I'm go one of the reasons I'm going here is because even though I've shown you like that one skill point which was to be or not to be hit, um, that do that doesn't really t show you what the boss, the like, fighting the boss is like. Also on this planet, I can now show off the box breaker I just got. So first thing I'm doing is just buying the ammo again for all the weapons because I can just do a bit more grinding off screen. I have done a lot of it already to get up to this point in the game. It's actually quite far. Like I've gotten up to a, like a quite a... This is quite a bit of a late game save. In fact, the previous video you watched, How to Beat the Thugs for Less Prison, since this is a fresh install in Windows 10. Oh, well, kind of fresh install. I had to like install the emulator again. I've actually beaten the Thugs for Less Prison again. Anyway, enough of jibber jabber. Uh, this is what the box breaker does. So, you smash once, like you do a single hyper strike, and it will create an air shock wave that just breaks everything around you. It's really good for getting like all the vandalism type achievements. 
because it also, like, as you can see there, it broke the explosive crate. So yeah, one of the uh, one of the achievements to get you can get here is super easy to get. It's just called Vandalize. All you have to do is completely smash up this place. Oh, um, uh, I kind of contradicted myself because I say it's super easy to do, but if you didn't have the box breaker like I do right now, it wouldn't actually be that easy to smash up this place because. There are a lot of things you have to smash up. The game is a little bit lenient, so it will allow you to leave like one or two items left around. But I remember when I was younger, I was like thoroughly searching through this place, desperately trying to find the last few items, and I just could not find them. So yeah, just for the vandalism achievement, I'm not going to do the entire thing like with the Man Megacorp store, because it'll only just take too long. But that's pretty much it. Just smash up this entire area to get the vandalism achievement. Trust me, he will get it. And But now I can show you the other achievements. So I'm just going to use the charge boots, an item you also win at the uh, Megacorp games, to basically rocket my way across here and enter the arena. You get this teleporter pad here once you've already beaten the arena. And I'm going to show you how to get the two arena achievements. Choose a battle and win a prize. Okay, so the first uh, arena achievement is called Wrench Ninja Blade to Blade. Returning to battle is everyone's favorite blood eater. And he slices, he dices, and carves up a okay, I'm just gonna actually just turn Rice. the sound off for a minute because the voice Rice. sound is linked to the sound effects. So if I have this on, you hear the dude in the background cheering. If I have this off, it's completely silent. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to have this completely silent because that background uh, narrator for this arena is honestly getting annoying. Right, so, for the achievement uh, Wrench Ninja Blade to Blade, you have to kill this dude here, this gladiator, Chain Blade, using only your wrench. Now, I've got the last wrench in the game, so this should actually be pretty easy, but I might as well just show you, like right now, I actually have been showing you without really thinking about it, how to dodge his attacks. So, one of his attacks that he does is where he just runs around on the floor and he just tries to chop you. It's super easy. As you can see here, you can just run backwards from him and you won't get hit. And then the other one was basically just a lot of backflipping and trying to get uh, like past him. Right, so, as you can see here, my wrench is so strong that smacking him actually makes him fly backwards. Also, as you can see there, he's only doing one damage. To me and I have just so much health because as I said before late game save so um what was I gonna say oh yeah um this guy chain blade he'll actually only do one damage even if you got the worst armor in the game the green armor but I don't I've got um like the second best armor in the game because you I really really needed that to beat one of the later planets the um snowback the thugs for home world so yeah there as you can see got a skill point for just smacking him around using nothing but my wrench. And then the next skill point is for killing the B2 Brawler without taking any damage. In my opinion, you could do the B2 Brawler battle. What I actually like to do to uh, to beat him, like to, get, to beat him without taking damage, is do the tag team battle between him and Chainblade. And here's the reason why, and I'll show you like, right now. So... First, oh, might as well also go into the uh, skill points again to show you that, um, yeah, I wasn't, uh, joking with the, uh, chain blade one. There it is, wrench ninja, blade to blade, defeat chain blade with only a wrench. As I said, much easier to do when you don't, that, as you, so as you can see here, the, um, silver wrench that the Ratchet is using in this little uh, screenshot is the first wrench in the game. If you beat him like this, he'll actually be probably a challenge, but... Once you get the second wrench, like the um, one with the little orange dots on it, and now the uh, one with the line on it, the third wrench in the game, uh, wrench upgrades, I guess you can call them, that means um, he's uh, much easier to beat because, well, those wrenches do a lot more damage. So anyway, on to how to, well, how I like to beat the B2 Brawler. So, the reason why I like to choose this tag team match, where you verse both of them at the same time, is because you can just get out your really powerful weapons and then shoot Chain Blade until he decides to basically tag team out. And then what I usually like to do is deploy a heap of these turrets so it starts shooting him, then equip my sniper rifle, the vaporizer, which you would have seen me use in like the gameplay against the Thugs for Less in my Thugs for Less prison video, the previous one. Yeah, and then just kill Chain Blade, deploy even more turrets, and yeah, this is the reason why I like fighting the B2 Brawler this way, 
because he like well I don't know if it's a he it's a it's a robot brain like it's a, a brain with a rope actually like piloting a robot yeah that's the reason why I like to beat him in this type of match because you get like a little bit of time to think and a little bit of time to prepare as the arena fighters switch out with each other like Chainblade and the B2 Brawler tag team you. I'll show you what the uh, regular fight against him is like though. Oh, and also I might as well like explain why I was I was just using such high powered weapons to shoot him and kill him. So this attack here, he's in fact yeah there I just got hit immediately. So that attack there he was using. Where he was like firing his cannons, in my opinion, that's easy to avoid. This spin attack is much harder to avoid. So when you're low level, this can potentially kill you very, very easily. Because, well, yeah, he'll just knock you about, he'll stun lock you. And the worst part is, at yeah, this point, so I've got a lot of health, so I can pretty much explain what's down here. This down here, if I fall into it, it's like an electrical, well, shock field that will start to damage you. And if you fall down there too much, in fact, I'm just going to show you what happens. So if you keep hitting the electrical shock field, it will, like, make you go upwards. But upon, like, the fourth hit, it, you will just za get, get zapped and die. It doesn't matter how much health you have. I was just dead at that point, and then the game just auto-saved. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, so, um, that's pretty much why I don't like fighting the B2 Brawler there. And also, as you can see, in his last phase, he'll not only do that spin attack, but he'll also fire his cannons at you. So that's generally why I like to do... A tag team match on him instead, so I get a little bit of a chance to think. Yeah, so that covers all the skill points for this place. Now it's time to move on to the next planet, uh, Endaco. And I can actually turn the sound back on because once we're, uh, I'm there, there won't be uh, an arena announcer in the background. Yeah, you might be able to hear a plane in the background that was uh, not part of this script or anything, even though I said I just have the uh, videos unscripted. But yeah, that was not planned. I don't know when planes are going to come over my house or something I can't avoid. Like, usually I pick times when it's kind of quiet to record, but honestly, who can ever say when like, a plane or a helicopter is ever going to come over you? What? Oh, 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 silly me. I turned music up instead of sound effects. Although, I didn't actually know this, but apparently you can have the music playing without the sound effects. So, neat. Yeah, so, one of the ways you get a skill point here is called Destroy All Breakables, and is pretty self-explanatory. You just... You bust up everything here. So, like I said before, same applies to the Mega Corp store and all those other places. Either use your most powerful weapons and nuke the level, get the box breaker by defeating old Toadie, like I did. Or, if you want, uh, another way, of course, to beat it is just meticulously whack everything and throw your wrench at everything uh, to kill it that way. Oh, there is, however, one thing I want to show you, and that's um. Okay, you see these TVs over here? The same Megacorp TVs. So these can be a little hard to hit. I'm not sure if the Box Breaker... Yeah, okay, so the Box Breaker, it's Air Shockwave can't hit it. The Lancer here, the first weapon you get in the game, can hit it, but that's like pretty much the, at its maximum range. If you can't hit some of the others because they're too far away and your Lancer can't get it, then I just recommend using this one, the Mini Rocket Tube or the Mini Rocket Cannon, or just buy this. The Vaporizer, which starts off at first when it's unupgraded, it's called the Pulse Rifle, by the way. And use that to kill everything. I mean, to not everything. Kill the TVs. Shoot the TVs. You're not really killing it. Don't know why I said that. So, the reason... Uh, so that's basically one skill point covered. Just smash everything. Pretty dirt simple. So the reason why I'm going through here and shooting all these robots is because the next skill point here is called Operate Heavy Machinery... And you have to use cranes to kill robots. So this is the first room where you can actually start killing robots. And this is actually one of the most difficult parts to do. Because you have to crush them with this box. And you can see the crane controls right there. So they use left analog stick to move the camera. Which is the same for most co controllers. Like the one I'm using is actually an Xbox 360 controller. So instead of pressing X to lift and drop, I'm pressing A. And instead of exiting the crane with triangle, I'm exiting it with Y. So, what, yeah, oh, okay, so this is actually a really good point. So those robots are together. Oh, okay, they aren't anymore. But I'm trying to wait. It's really good if you get two robots that are together, because then you can drop the crane in them, 
and you get two at once. But what happens when you drop one crate in them is that afterwards, they suddenly like, become more cautious and actually start trying to avoid the crate. So, in my opinion, just, yeah, spam the drop and the drop button over and over when you're, like, roughly over robots and try and get it on top of them. Because you can actually drop this thing pretty fast, but, uh, yeah, as you can see there, these robots are just generally a bit of a pain in the ass to crush with this thing. So, just remain vigilant, vigilant as well, and just keep at it until eventually all the robots are crushed. Okay, I'm pretty sure I can actually smash enough robots so that like, the game gives you a bit of leeway and you don't have to smash them all with the crane. So rather than staying here forever, I'm just gonna jump down and hit the last one with my wrench. This robot here, unfortunately, you can't smash him with the crane. You can tell because there's no crane in this room, so I'm just gonna shoot him. I should have just used the auto-aim, because apparently I suck at aiming at enemies in the move a little. Yeah, here there's also just, uh, no crane. And that there was a rivet boss. When you first face them, they can actually be a little bit deadly. Yeah, but as you can see here, I'm actually like, uh, well... I just dodged that thing's laser. So yeah, here yeah, I might as well show you. So like, yeah, the rivet bot, it pretty much keeps you at a distance. It just continuously fires rivets at you. So, the best way you want to avoid it is just long range weapon like that and just shoot it. Just don't even get close. Don't give it the satisfaction of even been hitting you. Oh, and uh, these little robots here, as you can see, the lancer is one of my, or oh, heavy lancer once you upgrade it, is one of my uh, favorite weapons for beating them. In fact, the Heavy Lancer works pretty well against Rivet Bots. These are pretty low-level enemies, by the way, so that's why they're all dying so fast. Oh, and the reason why I haven't just completely moved on to the next plan is because I want to show you a few more crane mechanics and I have to fight my way up to the next crane. So yeah, this is crane 2. And um, now that I'm up to it, I can show you a really neat thing about it. So once you use the crane on one of these enemies, on one of these, like, these laser robots, these cleaner bots. Oh, by the way, this is a terrible cleaner design. Like, it's honestly lasering everything, so, like, if you were a technician and try to get near it and pick it up, you'd have to use a crane like I'm doing right now, otherwise it would, like, chop you in half. Right, so, once you have this, uh, cleaner bot, it's, uh, really awesome because you're able to just go over every other single, like, every other robot and kill them, and even these little enemies here, you can just kind of trail them around and as soon as your, like, little laser even gets over them, they'll die. And yeah, as you can see there, I've gotten the skill point for the crane. And you can also even use it on the other cleaner bots. Well, well of course you can. I just did that a moment ago. And, of course, I just want to get this last guy. Because, and then also when you're done with him, you just drop him. And he dies and explodes. But I also wanted to show you this thing. So this is an explosive crate. And it blows up, like, after a short countdown. However, I'm pretty sure that this cleaner bot here will actually be able to detonate it with these cleaner things. So I'm just kind of like putting it in the corner next to him. Oh. Okay, so apparently it didn't work, but the good thing about the explosive crate is that it's kind of like, um, uh, I guess you could call it a double whammy. So what you can try and do with it is instead of just putting it down like I did and waiting for it to explode again, you can try and drop it on their head. Okay, as you can see, there, this is, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to happen. So as you can see, I missed dropping it on the cleaner bot's head, however, the explosion killed the cleaner bot, and I'm pretty sure that still counts. Yep, so just shooting that little enemy there, and... Oh! I really wasn't... I, I forgot you show up. Oh, can't catch me! <laughs> yeah, that little jump noise you can hear is just more just spawning in. Yeah, so this is where, um, Clank gets captured. You could kind of count that as a spoiler, but honestly, it's really not much of a spoiler, because, um, yeah, he- it happens pretty early in the game. Okay, so I'm glad I'm actually here, because, um, yeah, I needed, wanted to show you that, so... The lights around this place, they, you can um, break them. In fact, there was a pre the previous corridor I walked in to get to this part. So, yeah, the part where um, where Clank is captured. If you look up here, there's actually a bunch of... Um, 
Ah. So what I was trying, what I'm actually trying, what I was trying to do is like wall jump off here, but apparently you can't wall jump off here because that would allow you to get up, back, back, get up here, and then you'd be able to just exit the level like that once you rescue Clank, and they want you to go through like a Clank puzzle with like you send them through this vent. But I can just show you with this uh, mini nuke here. So yeah, as you can see, you can actually break the lights there. So that's one thing a bunch of people, like uh, not a bunch, but uh, some people may not ignore but not know about i wouldn't blame you if you came to this planet for the first time and you just didn't think you could destroy the lights so this is one of my tips to you so you're able to get that achievement for smashing up just about everything on this planet oh yeah and also another thing that isn't skill point related but it's just really neat look at that it's a pizza ship i never noticed this when i was younger because well frankly i didn't pay too much attention to background stuff but I just really like that. Maybe it's like a little Easter egg or something, but the developers just made a ship look like a pizza on this planet. It's flying by. Just because. I really like that. Yep, yeah, so uh, now that this planet's done, on to the next one. Uh, actually, the uh, next few. So, this one, uh, v Vulcar Canyon, this actually doesn't have any skill points you can get on it, but... I'm going to go here anyway, because I'm going to need to buy a bunch of weapons to get a skill point in another place. And those are Ratchet and Clank 1 weapons. So, I could of course have, if I have um, a save file with Ratchet and Clank 1 da data on it, the, lady, the vendor lady there will give you the weapons for free. But, since I don't have a save file, I'm just going to pay for them, because, uh, Quite frankly, starting off a Ratchet & Clank 1 game and playing through all of that just to get a few free weapons when they don't cost that much, it's not that much of a big deal for me. And, uh, I want to get this video out. I want to, like, not let this video, like, well, I want to get this video out sooner rather than later is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, so, um, these enemies here, they normally are much tougher, but I'm using, as I already said, a very upgraded wrench, so... They're extremely easy to kill, but I'm going this path anyway just to show you what you generally be fighting here. Ah, uh, and, and this bridge, this is honestly one of my favorite places to use either the mini nuke or the blitz gun or the blitz cannon I've got it upgraded to. So what I love to do here is just wait for these tribes to group up. There's usually more of them, sometimes even jump over them just to like get them up in a nice group like here and then you just, yeah, do that. The uh, unupgraded... Uh, the unupgraded gun, the gravity bomb can pretty much do the same. Oh, oh, by the way, I might as well show you what I'm talking about. So in this game, um, on your first playthrough, guns can be upgraded once. After that, they can be upgraded twice. How you do that is just kill enemies. The uh, in-law explanation for this is that um, people in this universe have nanotech inside them. Even the robots do. It's basically like a... Um, um, I don't know what to call it, because you see this box over here? I'm just going to zoom in it with the sniper rifle. This is nanotech. I don't know actually what it is. Like, it's just this glowing orb, but I do know... Uh, well, I'm, so what I'm saying is I don't know what it is. Like, is it a gas? Is it a actual, like, solid substance? Is it a liquid? That kind of thing. But I do know what it's made out of. It's meant to be made out of, like, nanobots. So, little microscopic robots that are inside your bloodstream... Or I guess just inside you if you are a robot and you don't have blood. And um, once you kill enemies, you siphon the nanobots out of them. Or nanomites actually is this game calls it. Which is a kind of the same thing. Like dust mite usually is like... Well, a dust mite's kind of a small thing. So this is a nanomite. So nano also means small. There's just a, there are many types of robots inside you. Anyway. Once you kill enemies, this little bar will start to like fill up. For example, I've got one on this uh, spider bot glove here. This is the little red bar. And once you fill it then you um, upgrade the weapon and it has like a nice upgrade effect and kind of spins around and like lightning hits it. It's really awesome looking. I'll, I'll try and record that happening to and like um, edit it in into this video if I have enough time and don't want to release it straight away. Yeah, so that's pretty much how it works. So once the weapon is um, orange, it's fully upgraded and unless you will start a new game plus, you can't, um, you can't uh, upgrade it again. Except in the later Ratchet and Clank games, you were able to upgrade it more. But, um, yeah, when the weapons are upgraded, they're really awesome. So this gun, the Blitz Cannon, it used to be just an average shotgun called the Blitz gu um, Gun. And uh, kind of fired uh, a red blast, but now it uh, it's so much more awesome. 
Oh, okay, so when the, the first time you come here, there's actually a bunch of enemies all sitting around the fire, and I wanted to show you, in fact, maybe I can still show you. Oh, good, good, it works, so. Yeah, this dude here. If you, um... Damn it! I'm okay, I, I totally forgot that my wrench was that powerful. I was trying to hit him to, because if you hit him enough when you have, like, the rank 1 wrench, then you're able to remove his sword, his shield, and he has just the sword and then he'll charge you. I was trying to show you that if you actually get an enemy to walk into this fire, it can actually damage them. Oh, and it can damage you as well. It's not for looks. So if you want, you can uh, spit roast yourself. I'm not sure why you'd want to though, because there isn't even an achievement to get that. So personal opinion, I'm actually not sure what's more deadly. So when you first come here the first time, Oh, that's pretty redundant, what I just said. Um, this bridge here will come across. Like, originally this bridge will not be, um... Well, I, I wouldn't say raised because this is not, like, a medieval bridge. Uh, this bridge here wouldn't be, like, um, uh, brought across to here. And what will happen normally is a bunch of trisen will rush out of this shop, oddly enough, because this is the only place they can come from. And... Then, they'll come towards you and uh, start acting like this and trying to kill you. Actually, this guy, he's pretty unique because uh, when you're over here, he will actually slowly try to, like, eventually come towards you, like, very slowly inch towards you, like he's doing now. But I guess since he's on the bridge, he's acting a little differently. So I could let him live, but I don't like the way he's looking at me. Yep, so away he goes, off the edge. Oh, by the way... If you, um, since this bridge originally wouldn't be here, I'm pretty sure this platform, wait, no, never mind. Actually, no, no, it would. So, this here is a grate that comes up and will block you off the first time you're here. But, as you can see here, there's no grate. So, one thing you could possibly do is, let's say you have the blitz gun, since it has a little bit of knockback. You come here and then you just, uh, start firing it and you start knocking all the tribesmen off the edge. Oh, by the way, I'm pretty sure... That your weapon will actually get upgrade like a tiny little bit of upgrade points if you push an enemy off the edge with it. It'll still count as a weapon kill. So this lady here is the um is the uh Gadgetron store. So there's a, a corporation called Megacorp, which kind of is like a mega corporation, which I guess fits with the name Megacorp, and they sell all the weapons and they also produce missiles and a number of other things in this galaxy, the Bogon Galaxy. But this lady comes from the uh uh, previous galaxy, the Solana Galaxy, and this place here is actually like a defunct Gadgetron site. So the reason why all these buildings and stuff are here, in fact, I'll just go right back to the start of levels uh, cause, because I want to show you something quite neat. I know I'm like uh, giving you a bit of a, a history lesson here, but uh, the history of this game is honestly pretty cool. So yeah, right here, that should actually be saying Gadgetron. I'll actually just zoom into it a little bit more, but as you can see, the like the, the letters are all like broken and it's falling off. So this is actually like a decrepit old Gadgetron like place where you could like I guess you could kind of call it a storefront like, or a depot or something where you could actually like um you could buy stuff from Gadgetron. And this lady here, this robot lady, actually still sells stuff. That's why she's got the little G here on her shirt or garment or whatever you call it, because she actually sells you Gadgetron weapons and she's with them. So, I'm pretty much gonna buy all of them. Except, of course, the Rhino 2, because that costs a million bolts, and I can't afford that. I'm 900,000 bolts off. And the reason why I'm guessing she's still alive and not killed by the, um, quite vicious tribesmen is because I'm pretty sure she was selling weapons to them. Or maybe, if they didn't want to buy the weapons, she was just telling them old campfire stories. <laughs> Which is honestly quite sweet. I imagine that's what she'd be doing. Right, so, now that I've shown you how to get these weapons, on to the next planet and the next skill point. Well, next few planets, because you can't actually get any skill points here. It's a space battle, by the way. None here, none here, but you can get one here, and it is so easy. It's um actually kind of, like, amazingly, well, not, I was going to say mind-numbingly easy, but it's not mind-numbing. Just once you do it, you might be, you either might be thinking, how do you even get that skill point, because... You might not even realize you got it, but once you do get it, yeah, I was uh, I was pretty amazed it was just that easy to get. That's the kind of wording I was looking for. All right, so this achievement is called "Can You Break a Snow Dan?" I think. I think it's a, a parody on "Can You Make a Snowman." It's like um, I think a song they sing in some kind of Christmas movie. 
Right, so I'm just going to test here if this actually works. Okay, no, it apparently doesn't. What I was trying to do is get the area effect of this weapon to go behind here and break this. So yeah, this is the Snow Dan. And uh, the reason why it's called that and the reason why it looks kind of freaky if I just zoom in here is because that is actually one of the developer's faces. Dan something. I don't know his second name, but I know he's called Dan because uh, they put a reference in the game, a game of him as this snowman. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to break it. Yeah, so there, you break it and you get an uh, and you get the achievement. Or skill point. You can break a snowman, which as I said is a reference to you can make a snowman. I guess I said it wrong the first time. Oh, oh right. I totally forgot there actually is a skill point you can get a knocktack. So yeah, that, that's pretty much done. For this planet, that's how you get the skill point. It's the only one here. So, I don't even have to show you how to get past the rest of the planet because, quite frankly, um, you can, it's pretty kind of self-explanatory. You just fight through the enemies like normal like you would in the regular game. I'm so glad I actually went to the skill point me menu because uh, missing this skill point would have been um, really unprofessional. Right, so this here is the planet Noctak. Very, very lovely, very lovely scenery. Plenty of um, lights to smash, plenty of money earned to earn here. Well, not the most money. You do get more money from other planets, but um, yeah, one of the just the way you get this skill point is honestly, in my opinion, also kind of awesome because it's quite a spectacle when you get it. You see what I mean in just a minute. Oh, uh, by the way, what's actually happening here is that sometimes enemies like those chicken bots, if you um, pause the video you'll be able to notice that they're dropping like screws. Screws are worth a hundred bolts in this game. And these chicken, those chicken bots are not actually meant to drop the screws. They're meant to drop like a, um, they're meant to drop less bolts. However, sometimes enemies in this game will just drop more bolts than they're meant to. And then the crates around the level will then in response kind of drop less bolts. Usually these crates drop more than just 25 bolts. Yeah, I'm just destroying this spawner so nothing interrupts me. Okay, so the achievement, the skill point in this planet is, is called Planet Buster. You have to destroy this thing here. Now, the two ways you can go about it is either nuke it, like before with just um, all your most powerful weapons. Throw your wrench at it, which I really, really can make, recommend doing because you're actually able to break just about like every single one of these things. Which I'm surprised I never, never did before because what I used to do is just... Shoot this at it. Shoot the blitz cannon at it to break the things. In fact, the wrench was actually more accurate. And I can't believe this, but I actually only ever thought of the wrench tactic now. In this video. I never ever thought of it before, so I honestly feel quite dumb. Alright, so another way you can break them is uh, just smash these things. Now, since I'm using such an upgraded wrench, it's taking uh, a much shorter amount of time than it would take you. But just keep hitting it with the wrench. Even if it seems like you're getting nowhere. And these things will usually break off a bunch of those, like, uh, side spinny things. But then you get to the, uh, like, uh, kind of hard part of it, which I guess is just aiming at these globes. So you really just need good timing. Just waiting for this one to come around. Yep, got it. Okay, missed that one. Just going to aim at the center of this one. Yeah, and then I got it. And then you can use the weakest weapon, whatever you want. You don't have to hit this orb once and... There's your spectacle that I was talking about. Kablamo. And what a spectacle it is. Yep, and that pretty much covers it. You don't have to do anything else in this planet. Because there are no other skill points here. We can move on to the next one! I'm dead. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I, I knew I was dead because, um... The fish around, the, the fi this fish in the water, and... They'll just straight up kill you. In Ratchet and Clank 1, you were actually able to kill the fish at one point. I love that part of the game because it just felt like such sweet revenge. Like so many planets, the fish would constantly eat you, and then finally, here's a planet where you get to kill them. Hmm. And actually, uh, now that I think about it, this video has been going on for a little while. I've covered about. How many did I cover? I'm just gonna check. Oh, eight. So, yeah, I covered eight skill points. So, I basically. Just decided right now, I'm... Oh, yeah, the Vandalized Mark Tiny Nebula. I thought I didn't get the uh, Smash and Grab one for the Mega Corp store, but I did. Yeah, so I'm pretty much actually going to um, 
end the video here so it isn't super duper long because frankly yeah, I actually thought about this before I was making the video and I want to make a part two. That's not to draw it out and get more ad revenue and you know I'm telling the truth because I actually can't earn ad revenue right now. Yep, my channel is too small. Not enough. I don't get enough views and I don't get enough watch time. I'm not trying to guilt you into watching me more. Only watch me more if you want to. I'm just saying the facts and that's YouTube has a certain uh, uh, what you call it Certain milestones, that's what I was looking at, the word I was looking for. YouTube has certain milestones, you don't reach them, you can't put ads in your video. And I haven't reached that yet, so I don't even have the option to put ads on my video. When I get to that point, I'm not sure if I want to put ads on the video yet either. I'll think about it. But for now, as I was saying before, that's pretty much uh, this video over. I hope you tune in for part two. Nom, nom, nom. Um, nom.